Hello. In this lecture, we are going to talk about some simple mechanics. Now, as you, as you know, this course is on MEMS. MEMS means micro electromechanical systems. And these systems or devices have both the mechanical and electronics parts. Now, I know that many of the students who are taking this course can be from non mechanical background and but all of the whether you are from mechanical or non mechanical background you need to understand some basics of mechanical engineering or mechanics. So, this slide I have presented earlier also that the general working principle of MEMS sensor that you have some external force and that external force is ultimately moving some structure this can be a cantilever cantilever means that like a simply supported beam at which is fixed at one end and other other end can freely move right like a cantilever or a membrane and because of the external force this uh, moving structure is deflected like this and we measure the deflection by some electrical or optical technique and then we can back calculate the applied force if we know the force deflection relation. Now, let us take a simple MEMS sensor which can be let us say force sensor. So, this is a simple cantilever which is fixed at this end. So, this end let us say it is put under uh, inside some wall. So, this end can, cannot move or cannot even bend whereas, this tip can bend or move. Now, if we apply some if we apply some force F then what will happen? The cantilever will bend now right and it will be its tip will be deflected by some amount let us say x. Now, the question is that how we may, um, can measure this deflection? This deflection we can measure by putting some sensing element like piezo resistive elements. So, piezo resistive elements are such that that if we apply some amount of stress or strain on those elements then its resistance changes. So, this piezo resistive element we can put here where the stress is maximum and then we can measure the resistance. So, uh, we can measure the resistance and while the force is not applied the resistance will have some value let us say R 0 and while we apply some force because of the stress is this R 0 will change and that change can be uh, measured by some electronic circuit and then from that uh, change in resistance we can calculate how much is the deflection. But do we know that how this force and deflection is related? Now, how this force and deflections are related for that we need to understand like the uh, mechanics like how a beam uh, deflects or how a beam moves, what are the different constraints etcetera. And for that we are going to work on paper and then we will uh, see exactly how uh, different uh, force and deflections are related for different structures. Let us first take this simple example which uh, you, uh, you have already seen probably at your uh, 12 standard where a mass is held by a spring. So, this is a mass m and this spring has a spring constant of k right. Now, if we apply a force f and because of that let us say this mass is deflected by some amount x then we know we know from laws of mechanics that f is equal to k into x right. So, force is related to this deflection by a simple spring if the deflection is very small right otherwise it will not be linear it will go into nonlinear domain. Now, here the force is a linear function of deflection and this relation we can write from there. Now, what we are doing in MEMS devices that we measure x 
or the deflection by some optical or electronic technique. Then we know k or the spring constant from its geometry. Then we calculate f, how a because f equal to k into x. Okay. So, one of our one of our major objective one main objective is to get the force deflection relation. And if we can get a linear, uh, linear relation between the force and the deflection, then we can directly use the spring mass system like a model. So, it will make our analysis even more simpler. So, now we will take the simple case of one side fixed beam or cantilever. So, let us say this is a uh, simply supported beam one side is fixed to this wall and the beam has a uh, length of L. So, its length is capital L with W and the thickness or the height of the beam is H. Okay. Now, we apply some amount of force F and because of that, so let us assume that we have applied some force F and because of that the beam has moved in the in this direction along its length by some amount. delta L. Okay. So, let us fix the coordinate first. This is x, this is y and this is z. Okay. So, this force F is, uh, is applied in x direction and because of that the tip has uh, deflected by an amount delta L or elongated by an amount delta L. Now, by definition we know that stress equals to force by area. So, what is the force here F and what is the area? Area means this cross sectional area right, the beam cross sectional area and that area is this W into H. So, F by W H is the stress, let us call it sigma. Now, what is strain? Strain is the amount of deflection by its original length, right. So, strain epsilon equals to what is the deflection amount as I told delta L divided by its original length that is L right. So, now we have stress and strain and from laws of elasticity we know that the stress varies linearly with the strain with the uh, like how much is the deflection. And so, the sigma by epsilon is a constant which is called Young's modulus and let us call it E. Now, this E capital E is a constant and material property. Right. Sigma and epsilon we have already got. Sigma is F by W H and epsilon is delta L by L. 
and this equals to E. So, if we rearrange it then we get delta L like f equals to f equals to delta L into w h e by L right. Now, this f is the force and this delta L is the deflection or what we called earlier for the spring mass system as x right. So, this portion w h e by L this is stiffness constant or the spring constant of this particular cantilever for this particular direction force. Now, this W H E L are all geometry and material dependent. So, once we know that then we can easily calculate the applied force from the measured deflection. Okay. So, now for this case like for a uh, one side fixed axial stress beam we know the we know the force deflection relation right. Now, we will see that what is the force deflection relation if we apply the force from top that is this case. So, here the cantilever cantilever will bend by some amount right and this def, uh, this is what its deflection is and we need to understand that we need to understand that how this deflection let us call it small w how this deflection is related to the force and for that we will be doing the same kind of analysis again. The just to remind you the whole point is that we want to ultimately model this system with a simple string spring mass system right and there you know that if we apply a force f and we have a spring of k then the f equal to k x and our goal here is to find that k ok. Now, in the last case it was like a uniform deflection in just one dimension right and it was a linear deflection, but now it is bending because of the uh, because of the vertical force the beam will bend towards uh, like beam will bend downwards. So, there will be a curvature introduced in the beam. Now, before we go into this analysis we need to understand a few properties of of bent beams. So, for that we will consider pure bending. So, let us assume this was a uh, simple cantilever beam like this and then because of the moments it make made this kind of curvature. Now, there will be so if uh, for this beam you see the top portion will be elongated but the bottom portion will be compressed so there will be at some por, uh, some region in the middle or some line in the middle which will be at the same length and that we can call as neutral axis above neutral axis 
all the fibers if you consider it like fibers then all the fibers has been elongated and below the neutral axis this is compressed. What is the stress on a fiber just at a distance let us say at a distance z from the neutral axis. So, at this at this line which is at a distance z from the neutral axis at a uh, it is below j, z uh, distance from the neutral axis what is the stress or strain on this on this fiber or on, on, on this layer. So, for that what we know that strain epsilon x right because this is x axis uh, you can see this this is the x direction. So, this uh, elongation is in x axis right. So, sigma x at a distance sigma epsilon x at a distance z equals to this deflection by the original length. Now, what is the deflection? Deflection is its current length minus its uh, past length. So, what is the current length? Current length if I take a uh, if I take an element like this d theta here let us take this angle as d theta then what is the length uh, what is the uh, uh, current length current length is radius of curvature or the uh, radius at this point is rho minus z right because the neutral axis is ok so we can consider this radius as rho from the center to the neutral axis from the center to the neutral axis it is rho and this layer is just z distance below the neutral axis. So, the radius at this layer is rho minus z into d theta minus its original length. So, what was its original length? Original length of the all the layers was same equal to the neutral axis. So, what is the length of the neutral axis layer? So, that is rho d theta. Right. So, current length is rho minus z d theta minus uh, and uh, the old, uh, old length was rho d theta divided by what? Divided by rho d theta. So, now you will see it will come as minus of z d theta divided by rho d theta equals to minus of z by rho. So, let us uh, this minus is coming because this layer is below the neutral axis. So, it is in under compression. So, the modulus of sigma x at z equals to z by rho. Now, this is strain. So, what is stress? Stress is stress sigma x at z mod of that equals to Young's modulus that is E into epsilon x and that is E z by rho. Okay. So, this is one important relation we will need later also and sigma x at z equals to 
head by the this is also you might need later okay okay now we have the stress and strain relation and we will use one relation between the uh, acting moment and the radius of curvature for pure beam from mechanics which uh, we will use that relation directly we will not uh, derive it here because as it is not in the scope of this course and according to according to this formula the radius of curvature if uh, uh, the radius of curvature 1 by rho is equals to applied moment divided by e into i so this is very important and we are not going to derive this this uh, mechanical engineering students already knows it and uh, if anybody is interested then you can uh, find it from the laws of mechanics or the beam theory book so for a pure bending case where the applied moment is m and the uh, curvature uh, radius of curvature is rho and moment uh, young's modulus is e and moment of inertia is i we can write this relation between the radius of curvature and the applied moment here i is moment of inertia and rho e and m0 has been already m0 is the applied moment Now another important uh, assumption or uh, formula we are going to use from geometry that is let us say if we have a one side fixed beam like this and then because of deflection it has made this kind of curvature then if this angle of deflection if it is very small theta then we can write that 1 by rho where this rho is the radius of curvature of, uh, of this geometry ok of this geometry this is rho is equivalent is equal to let us say this is the force and this is w w and deflection w at a distance x so at this point the deflection is this much at this point the deflection is this much at the tip the deflection is even more so this is deflection w at any point x is related to the radius of curvature by this rule which we can find from geometry ok but what we need to um, remember here that this theta is very small then only we can write this expression otherwise uh, the this equation will not hold the another uh, other nonlinear terms will also come into the picture ok. So, now we know that for pure bending case and small deflection we can have this two expression that 1 by rho is equal to m 0 by e i and 1 by rho is equal to d 2 w by d x square where w a is the deflection at any point x. So, we can write then from these two equation we can write that d 2 w d x square equals to 
m x because this moment at different uh, <coughs> at different distance from the fixed point the moment also will be different. So, this is also a function of x uh, m x by e i right. So, now we have a relation between the radius of curvature and the moment, but what is the moment at every point for our case if we see this cantilever beam then at different point the moment is different and let us say if I take this face which is at a distance x from the fixed space then this is at a distance l minus x from the point where the force is applied. So, the moment at this point because of this force is f into l minus x you already know that the moment is force and the distance of uh, like uh, at any point the moment is the force into the distance from the from that for particular force right from the, from the line of force. You know that the moment is the force into the distance from the line of force. So, here the moment will be f into l minus x. Now, we can write that m x is equal to f into l minus x right. So, we get that d 2 w d x square is equal to f into l minus x. Okay. Let us call this equation, let us call this equation as equation 1 and this equation as equation 2. Now, we have the differential equation we need to solve it, but before solving we need the boundary conditions also and what are the boundary conditions. So, the boundary conditions first boundary condition is w my need this is a small w which is the deflection and the capital W I have earlier wrote it for the width of the beam. This w or the deflection at x equal to 0, x equal to 0 means the point which uh, where the beam is fixed to the uh, to the wall at that point the deflection is 0 right. At this point at this point the deflection will be 0 definitely right and also another thing is as this is a very small deflection at this point the slope also will be 0 means d w d x at x equal to 0 also will be 0. So, this is our so this is our second boundary condition is d w d x at x equal to 0 is also 0. So, this is boundary condition 1 and this is and this is boundary condition 2. Now, if we solve the differential equation then you, uh, you see that one side it is d dot d 2 w d x square and on the side there we have a x. So, it will come as x square and then x s cube right. So, solving this equation we get that w x equal to a plus b x plus c x square up to x cube term right. Now, a, b, c, d all this 
coefficients we can calculate from the boundary conditions. Now, with B C 1 and B C 2, we can write that see B C 1 is W at 0 equal to 0. So, equals to A only equals to 0 and B C 2 is D W D X zero equals to zero. So D W D X is B plus two C X plus three D X square, right? equals to uh, and uh, if we uh, d w d x equal to 0 means then we can write that at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 equals to b only equals to 0 right. So, a equal to 0 comma b equal to 0 from boundary condition 1 and 2. Now, from equation 2, so let us first write then what is my w x then w x is means as a and b are 0. So, c x square plus d x cube right and d w d x equals to 2 c x plus 3 d x square right and d 2 w d x square equals to 2 c plus 6 d x right. Now, from equation 2 we can tell we also know that d 2 w d x square from equation 2 we can see that d 2 w d x square equals to f into l minus x right. So, and this equation this expression is valid for all the x's. So, we can write from equation 2 2 c plus 6 d x equals to 2 uh, sorry here will be uh, d 2 w d x is here will it will be my e i because d 2 w d x square equals to m x by e i m x equal to f into l minus x. So, there will be e i ok. So, f into l minus x divided by e i right. So, and this expression is valid for all the x's. So, we can write we can tell that 2 c equals to f l by e i and 6 d equals to minus f by e i or c equals to f l by 2 e i comma d equals to minus of f by 6 e i right ok. So, w x or the deflection equals to f l 
by 2 e i into take x square out to 1 minus x by 3 l right. So, this is our deflection versus force relation for for any x right at any point uh, at any point of the beam we can find that how what is the deflection with respect to the force. Now, what is the tip deflection? Tip deflection w at x equal to l equals to if we put x equal to l we will get f l cube divided by 3 e i. So, if we rearrange it we can write it as f equals to 3 e i divided by l cube into w at x equal to l. So, this is the spring constant or transverse spring constant because now the force is applied in transverse direction earlier the force was applied in axial di, uh, direction and this is the deflection. So, we now we can model this beam considering just a spring connected to the tip of the beam. Now, we can uh, model this beam with the help of the spring mass system where this is the spring constant k t and accordingly we can do the further analysis. So, just note one thing that the earlier for the axial stress case we got the we got the spring constant k which was the axial axial beam for the axial case right, but the force was in the direction of the beam length or uh, in the axial direction whereas, in this case the force is at the transverse direction. So, with the same beam same beam while changing the force direction the spring constants are different and the analysis are also different.